Hello to the students, and this is again Teacher Anna, your learning partner. Now, last week we have our second, uh, our, uh, I think last uh, Monday is a uh, holiday. So now let's go to the next lesson after the second monthly exam. So this is lesson number 14, and this is the Filipino social thought. So, at the end of the lesson, guys, we are going or you are expected to first develop a deeper sense of nationalism from their critical understanding of important events in Philippine history. And then second is to emulate or emulate uh, role models from the ranks of Filipino nationalists and patriots. And then the third one is to apply uh, Filipino social political thought in solving present and emerging social problems in Philippine society in today's era and globalization. So let's try to know more about the Filipino social thought. So let's go, guys. Now let's start with the Spanish colonialism. So what is a Spanish colonialism? So when we say Spanish colonialism, guys, it took place at a time when socio-political development of communities in Luzon and Visayas was in its initial stage. So the lack of strong and solid socio-political foundation rendered the communities in Luzon and Visayas vulnerable to colonial invasion and subjugation. So tungod kay wala tay strong and solid socio-political foundation, guys. That's why we are easily colonialized by different countries. So first, it is Ferdinand Magellan who arrived in the Philippines to head a, Sp a Spanish expedition searching for the Spice Islands in 1521. So Magellan never completed the journey by himself. He was then killed in an encounter with natives in the Philippines after having claimed the Philippines is for Spain. So ilang claim ni Magellan nga ang Pilipinas is for Spain. So that's why he is uh, being killed by an encounter with the natives. Now, however, Magellan's plans to claim the whole of the Philippine island for Spain encountered stiff resistance for other natives, particularly from Lapu-Lapu, the chip chain of neighboring Mactan Island, in what is known as the Battle of Mactan. So that is, or that was fought on April 27, 1521. So Magellan and his 100 soldiers fought Lapu-Lapu and his 1,000 warriors. Wow, so 100 lang sila Magellan and then sila Pulapu is 1,000 warriors. Clearly outnumbered Magellan and most of his soldiers were killed. So that's why most of Magellan's soldiers were killed. So in 1565, when Miguel Lopez de Ligaspe concluded treaties of friendship with the native chiefs, or what we call the Dato, Spain's primary, primary aim and intention in the Philippines was to spread their religion, the Roman Catholicism. So para daw kang Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, uh, nakihimo uh, siya o treaty sa mga uh, chip, uh, native chips, katong mga tagas o granggo, mga, mga dato nila. <coughs> so for that, ang, ang ilahalang da intention ni Miguel Lopez de Legazpi is the spread of Roman Catholicism. Now, let's go to the next one. Now, let's have the execution of Gumborza. So here, if you see in the picture, that is uh, Gumborza is... Um, the death of Gumborza is on February 17, 1872. So, nahitabo or namatay ang Gumborza or the three uh, priors uh, was uh, on February 17, 1872. So, this is uh, way back when it is February and that is their death anniversary. So, these three uh, priors are Mariano Gomez, 
Jose Borgos and Jacinto Zamora. So to make it short, it is uh, known as Gomborza or the three Filipino priors. Now, let's go to the history of it. So the Cavite Munity of 1872 and ensuing execution of Gomborza were critical periods in country's historical development. These events marked the emergence of Filipino national sentiment and consciousness against Spanish colonial abuse. As a historical awakening, it led to the crystallization of Filipino national identity and consciousness. So, tungod sa execution of Gomborza, guys, uh, there is a critical period. Kanisha nahimo ni siyang critical period in the country's historical development. So, that's why nahimo ni siyang Filipino national sentiment and consciousness against the Spanish colonial abuse. So, tungod ani na ano, na awaken, uh, na nagmata or na mata ang mga. Uh, Filipinos because uh, ang Spanish Juday is very abusive to them and they need to have independence. So, tungod sa execution of Gomborza, it, there is now a national sentiment. Now, let's have the next one. So, let's try to know about the propaganda movement. So, unsa ang naasa propaganda movement? So, the propaganda movement articulated the Filipino anti-colonial movement. Filipino illustrados internalized the liberal and progressive ideas from Europe and this found expression in various propaganda materials such as novels, newspapers, and pamphlet, pam, pamphlets, among others. So the propagandists, their, through their work, sought to expose the inequalities in Philippine society and the abuses of the Spaniards in the hope of bringing about social and political reforms in the country. So, unsa na ning propaganda movement? So, mao ni siya ang anti-colonial movement. So, mura ni sila og mga NPA, mga kuan sa una. Pero ang ilahang main purpose is the anti-colonial movement. So, dili sila gusto mao sugot nga ang Pilipinas is makolonize sa other country. So, they are the Filipino illustrados. So, uh, internalize the liberal and progressive ideas from Europe. So that's why unsa ang naasa propaganda or the propaganda material. So naasa like novel. So just like uh, yung novela nga ibuhat sa ato ang mga famous authors like Jose Rizal, the newspapers too, and the pamphlets among others. So mo kaning mga tao sa propaganda or the propaganda movement is they are called the propagandist. So, sila ito nagasulat sa novels, nagasulat sa newspaper, nagasulat sa pamphlets. And even uh, those society nga nagkatabang sa mga revolutionary, uh, revolutionary movement. So, now let's try to know more about the propaganda movement. So, okay... Okay, so what is a propaganda or what is a propaganda movement? So this one, guys, is a peaceful crusade or campaign for reform. So peaceful siya nga pamaagi para uh, there are reforms in uh, various uh, things. Like for example, for Spanish government. So this is a peaceful crusade or campaign for reforms was done by means of pen and tongue to pressure the Spanish government. It was organized and participated by the Ilustrados. So just like uh, what is the Yellow Tards doing right now? So they are having a peaceful crusade, which is also a propaganda movement. They want to uh, show and even uh, they want to pressure the Philippine government too. So, gusto nila nga daw si Duterte. At the same time, gusto nila i-pressure si Duterte with what they have seen, the bad sides of his administration. So, which is uh, sometimes, kung over na kaayos siya, that is wrong food. But if uh, there, uh, ano, ang inilahalan yung gusto nga may tabu is to have or for us to have a patriotism, for us to develop or for the country to develop, then it is, it is uh, okay. 
but uh, the problem is kung masubraan na po. So, this is not just happening right now, but also happening in the other uh, year or in the previous or in history. So, they are having a propaganda movement. So, just like uh, it is being led by Jose Rizal and the other ano, authors for propaganda movement. <clears throat> So that's why, guys, the Ilustrados led the Filipinos' quest for reform. So gusto nila o kabaguhan. Because of their education, the newly acquired wealth, they felt more confident about voicing out popular grievances. So gusto nila or they are feeling confident na i-voice ang ilahang mga grievances. So the Ilustrados did not succeed in easing the suffering of the Filipinos. So wala sila nag-succeed sa pag, ano, sa pagtabang or pag hupa sa mga kasakit sa mga Pilipino. But this, uh, this from this group arose another faction call, called the Intelligentsia. So from this, core, the, from this group daw na ay ni uh, Tiwalag or na ay faction nga ginatawag na to og Intelligentsia. So nagbuhat sila og ilahang another nga grupo. So Intelligentsia also wanted reform. So gusto po sila kabaguhan. But they were more systematic and used a peaceful means called propaganda movement. So now let's go to the next one. So mo siya ang pamaagi nga, peaceful nga pamaagi through pen and reforms through tongue to pressure the Spanish government. So if ever we are abused or we have an abusive government, guys, always remember that we can also or we have our freedom to talk. We have our freedom to write something that uh, that our government is uh, making grievances or making uh, our, our Filipino people kind of nagasuffer. So most likely we have a voice. We can. We can also pressure the uh, government if they are not doing their part. But good to say that <clears throat> our government is really doing their part. To, for us or for the nation to be wealthy and for the sake of the Filipino people. So now let's go to the Filipino revolutionaries. So, ang problema guys kay uh, ang, ang mga gipang buhat ng mga newspaper, mga novel sa katong ano, sa ito ang mga propaganda movement. So most likely, ginasunog ra, ginapatay ang muba sa ato or kanang Dili siya open, dili siya pwede nga harap-harapan ipanghatag. So most likely it is a underground movement. So kung dili kaya, dili dili kaya sa pen and sa tongue, that's why there is now a Filipino revolutionaries. So uh, very few lang jud ang country nga wala jay, wala militar. So that's why we are also in the in the history we are a very weak country. It is because we are not united. At the same time, we doesn't have government system. We also doesn't have <clears throat> militaries to protect us. So that's why we are colonized by uh, by different countries. So now here comes the Filipino revolutionaries. Kumbaga ang mga karaan ni nato ng mga sundalo. So most likely. Uh, because we don't have systematic system of government, that's why it is just a Filipino revolutionaries so that we can protect our own land. So, kinsa man silang mga Filipino revolutionaries. So first, we have Andres Bonifacio, we have Apolinario Mabini. So they recognize the need for our for an armed struggle. So kinahanglan jud kit anjo nila nga na jud pagkinahanglan to have an armed struggle to attain independence. So this struggle is undertaken in defense of legitimate right. So gusto lang nila protektahan or idefensa ang ato ang legitimate right, our land, and to oppose and eventually topple a repressive and abusive government. So, gusto po nila nga i-oppose and topel a repressive and abusive government. So, dili sila gusto atong uh, gobyerno nga mupatay, nga wala hinungdan, mu-abuse sa mga babae o mga bata. So, that's why Andres Bonifacio is a Philippine patriot. So, he is the founder and leader of the Nationalist Katipunan Society. Siya ang leader sa Nationalist Katipunan Society who instigated the revolt of August 1896 against the Spanish. 
So, apo lang ngayon yung mabini maranan from July 23, 1864 to May 30, 1903 was a Filipino revolutionary leader. So, he is a leader. He is an educator. He is a lawyer and a statesman. statesman. So, mo ni siya si Apolinario Mabini. So, he served first as a legal and constitutional advisor of the revolutionary government. So, una, ihang served as a legal and constitutional advisor of the revolutionary government. And then, nahim mo siyang Prime Minister of Philippines upon the establishment of the First Philippine Republic. So, pag-establish ka ron sa First Philippine Republic, who are our first Prime Minister, so it's Apolinario Mabini Maranan. Okay? So, he is our first Prime Minister of the Philippines. Now, let's go to the next one. So, let's try to know about uh, colonialism. Uh, colonial colonialism and neo-colonialism. So this is Andres Bonifacio as I thought a while ago and Apolinario Mabini Imaranan and he is also known as the Dakilang Lumpo at Utak ng Himagsikan. So he is a very intelligent man. Gabasing Lumpo na siya. He is planning differentiated Himagsikan. So it's Nilang and he is or he is born or he was born uh, on July 23, 1864 sa Talaga, Tanwa, Tan, Tanawan, Batangas. So, nindot may nga place no? Tanawan, Batangas. So, this is where Apolinario Mabini Maranan is ano, born. So, nakapagtapos siya sa Coleo de San Juan de Litran noong 1887. Now, let's try to know more about colonialism. So, so, the ganjud kayo og mga katigula nga nato when they hear about colonialism like mangurong sila and they have a very bad experiences when in, when uh, the colonialism is ano kana na matong panghitabo sa colonialism. So I I also remembered na ako ang lola when I was a very young age when we talk about co colonialism like the new age or katong mga bagong tubo daw sayon lang daw kay sila hamulit ko colonialism uh, because they doesn't ano wala sila na naka-experience ko unsa gyud kalisod ang mahimong kanang colonize with other countries so ingon pa ni lola lisod jud kay like uh, manglaba ka nang laba daw siya niya na another time nga na-rape siya sa lalahi like uh, naka na-rape daw siya og Spanish uh, American or Americano nga sundalo so kwan jud kay siya lisod kasi wala kay freedom at the same time you are abused by a lot of people or you are all, you can also be abused by the uh, Americans and even <clears throat> the Spanish and even the Japanese so that's why si Lola is like kanang dili kay siya mahilig makihalobelo og mga Amerikano og kanang mga lain nga culture because of that uh, very bad experiences so in the US colonialism uh, colonial, uh, colonialism guys and neo colonialism were significant challenges to Philippine nationalism so the prevalence of western influence has led to the mingling of western and indigenous traditions as well as the replacement of indigenous cultural forms by foreign elements so this is now the colonialism which we have a very very big western influence even our gamit sa balay halos na nandili filipino made <laughs> we are because of our you know, love of the western influence and even love of their products and even uh, traditions nakuha nato sa ilaha so that's why guys nga tagan og mga pilipino